of getting past by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So New off in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. Only the up front, they are sp getting uh, with uh, Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But we just want to see how Halle Alistair Haig deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari, mate, with something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and approach he's dropped him all the way down the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult, the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll up the slipstream down it towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Varani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is. Push more and fall and up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike. Good have a go. Werrell, don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station will run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just like Trump. He's got on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race two. Uh, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of have fun. Yeah. It's all um, about the entertainment, so I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that, that Ron is at the enjoying himself oh watching dear. the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there as they're really bunching up now.
Does he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's just like Trump. He's not just second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! Hello everybody and welcome to the Circuit Giovona for round four of season two in the IGP Fun Super Lights League. It is the second time we've gone racing for a season in 2024. First time of course we've been for the Super Formula Lights and we are ready to go racing at Montreal, a great venue. We've seen so many frozen spills across the years in real life and there was another one than there at the bottom of your screen. Hoping for a good race here tonight with myself, Ian O'Leary, Dean Biggles alongside me for this round of the championship. No rain on this occasion. We've already experienced that back at the Hockenheim a couple of weeks ago. But uh, we're here at Montreal for what should be a very interesting race. I, I really enjoy this circuit, I've got to be honest, so I'm looking forward to this. Oh, it's fun. It's, uh, it kind of reminds me of a little bit of Albert Park too, doesn't it? Because uh, there's... Those walls can certainly come out and bite you. You can make mistakes. Of course, going into the pit lane is also very, very tricky because you've got the wall of champions there that you want to get as close as possible to exit to start another lap. Here's the championship standings. Yeah, Luca Verani is leading after three rounds, just four points ahead of uh, Simon Frelick. That's Jakob Olszewski, Simon Fessi and Tony Jimenez to round out the top five. Evan Way is on eight, seven points ahead of Tommy Maru. Then it's Brent Ruiz and Pedro Suarez who are tied on 80 points, but they've only been to two rounds each. Andy Flint is in 10th position on 78. Uh, he's been to three. Lee Aberdeen's only been to two. He's on 74 points ahead of uh, Evans. Tumakins has had a good start to the season. Dennis Cornu, Matthew Gracie and Will McIntyre Jones, the ones on your screen uh, there, the top 15. We'll go down to the top 20 with Nicholas Westman, Kenton Newoff, Lucas Marek, uh, Marcus Putnik's and Zud Blanco to round out the top 20. The reason I mention the amount of rounds that people have been at so far is because when the drop rounds are applied, that will be taken into account. What you can roughly do at this stage in the season is to uh, sort of divide the amount of points they have got by the amount of races they've been at. Um, for example, Luca Verani has scored the most of those who've been at all the rounds so far. That obviously makes a lot of sense. Uh, that's why he's at the top of the standings. If you divide his score by three, though, you get 39 points, whereas the best of those who are only into two rounds, uh, Pedro Suarez and Brent Ruiz, you can divide that into 40 points per round. So on average, they're slightly ahead of Luca Verani, but it's still very close. And of course, it's still very early in the season. Still nine weeks to go, including this one here tonight. There you have it, exactly. Well, I'm happy at the moment, at least, because Lee is on essentially this pole, isn't it? but anybody could take it away from him. Jacob, maybe you can see a purple sector right there for the pole driver. We keep an eye close on that one. Now, I'm fingers crossed that he doesn't steal it away there from the Aussie, and he will slot himself up in a P4. Sorry, drivers out there. I have to go for my, my nationality, man. We have 50 drivers on the grid. We're going to show 27, of course, in the screen up there for you but uh, impressive impressive uh, yeah so not long left in qualifying now uh, we're actually only a minute away from qualifying coming to an end what about Ren Hakim here who comes around the final couple of corners don't believe he's on a lap at all I know he is he's just not improving very much he'll go over the line and will not improve by quite some distance actually over a second back from his previous best but maybe he will have a chance to improve here we'll give a little bit of a, a view as to what it's like on board you can't help but notice that this car is relatively small compared to maybe the Formula 1 cars that run around here it gives them a lot of space to play with as he gets as close to the wall as possible uh, around turn 4 now on the brakes to turn 6 opening up this corner but you've got to open up the right hander at turn 7 the most that gives you the run onto this uh, back straight if you like well not the back straight but uh, the middle straight uh, and then into a chicane where things can get unstuck for you pretty easily uh, through turn 
eight and nine. Was, Luca Verani was giving us some information before the day, telling us about what's important. He said the setup in terms of being able to ride the curbs is very, very important. And turn eight and nine is a prime example of needing to ride those curbs well. Down the casino straight there. It's all about this exit here because this is your final opportunity. Apart from, oh, he's going to back off completely. Oh, we didn't get a full hot lap. Oh, not quite. Um, but never mind. It, the point still stands. Uh, uh, Shimon Frelick goes over the line and does improve. He goes to the fourth and with a nice lap there. Leonard Sherry also is going quickly right now, although he's way down in 33rd at the moment. He'll be making his way through the final couple of corners now to try and move himself further up the order. The checker flag is waving, so this will be the last chance for everybody, including Leonard Sherry, who is into the final couple of turns now. On the brakes, can you, how much can you get up on those curves? Not too much. You'll get a slowdown yeah. if you're not careful. Out towards the line for Sherry. The time of Lee Aberdeen has already gone. He's just around a second down on that, and that will put him up the order into 16th place. Good improvement from Leonard Cherry at the end there. I'll take that one, exactly. Especially the hot lap. He was very smooth. Not at all, as you say, on those chicane. So it's straight through there, the Wall of Champions. Because if you bounce up on that one, you're going to be into that wall. be interesting to see if anybody does. Some interesting places that people have spun. And I noticed during the practice session, he's going to have everybody really slowing down. I'm not quite sure anybody else is going to get a lap in to finish. Nope. I thought so. Uh, Tony Jimenez and Matthew Gracie might with the last two, but they're not improving. Uh, Tony Jimenez is ninth at the moment. As we have a look at the weather, 19 degrees in the air, 21 down on the circuit. That's not too warm. Uh, around a third chance of rain, as that graphic is showing there. So uh, that's worth noting as well. Um, so uh, we'll see. Luca Ferrari didn't mention rain to us at the start of the day, so I'm not going to presume that there is but uh, I suppose you never know in this modern day of iRacing whether there's going to be weather affected races or not it does sometimes uh, affect these races at Montreal so uh, you can never say never however uh, looks like not today let's have a look at the starting grid then ready for round four of the IGB Super Formula Lights League here in season two of 2024 it's Lee Aberdeen who starts on pole ahead of Mackenzie Root Ren Akeem and Simon Frelick are uh, on row two ahead of Jakob Olszewski and Evan Way Brent Ruiz 40 points from the two rounds he's been at so far starts seventh ahead of top five in the championship Simon Fessy it's Tony Jimenez and Andy Flint to round out the top ten with Will McIntyre Jones and Joel Aguilera to round out row six 13th place will be Pedro Suarez and it's then uh, two finished drivers 14th and 15th with Tommy Maru and Nicholas Westman. Leonard Cherry is 16th and of Dennis Cornu and then a couple of Americans, Patrick Pieper and Robert Ridgway. Championship leader Luca Verani rounds out the grid in 20th place at a track he says he doesn't particularly enjoy. He's ahead of Marcelo Kessler and Marcus Putniks. Eddie Amos and Comrade Bradbury are on row 12, ahead of Zoltan Zamato and Thibaut Rabelar. Stephen Renders and Stuart Moon are on the next row, followed by Jeans Carvajal and Jacques Willems. Patrick Williams and Koji Ito round out row 16, ahead of Adam Townsman, who's quite a long way back by his standards. John McKenzie is in 34th, ahead of Richard Van Veen. Chris Trott alongside him, Richie Tapara. And Marek Otlovs next up ahead of Giovanni Salita and Rina Scatini to round up the top 40. Then it's Sebastian Grubler, Matthew Gracie, Chris George Leeds, Oscar Artinano, Patrick Rollins, Don Lee, Nick Carty, Maximilian Gephardt and Patrick Olsen rounding out the 49 cars I'm sure will get on the grid. Not entirely convinced whether Clark Williams lined up there in 50th place will after not setting a lap in qualifying. And he's yet to get himself onto the grid for the race as well. So many laps ahead of us. An exciting race ahead of us at the circuit, Gilles Villeneuve, and it's all getting underway very, very shortly. Lee Aberdeen, a previous champion of this series, of course, will be getting us underway from the front, with Mackenzie Rune going to challenge him down in towards Turn 1. Of course, there'll be no active overtaking for the start of this race, so they'll have to be mindful of that to avoid any penalties again as the lights come on here at Montreal. Round 4 the Super Formula Lights League is underway. It's not a great start from Aberdeen. And on the outside, Mackenzie Rune may have the chance to go and take the lead now. he need to break late into Turn 1. He gives a very, very wide berth, though, to Lee Aberdeen, who holds on to the lead for the first of 
34 laps. It's Ryan Hakim who holds on to third as well. Ahead of Simon Frelick, then Jakob Ozeski, Evan Way, Brent Ruiz, Simon Fessi, Tony Jimenez, and Andy Flint, the top 10 through the first corners. I think we just had a bit of an accent in the back there too. Got some notification from race control. So we go back and have a look at that one a little bit later on. But uh, Lee has held off the attack. You can see at the moment, no change between the top 17, believe it or not. So they managed to switch their way back. You said no overtaking was supposed to occur anyway, but that accident occurred a little bit further back is the reason why you're going to see some people dropping a little bit up and down. We certainly are. Has anybody had to return to pit lane early on here? The answer to that is no, uh, although we have had a few non-starters. Koji Ito, Don Lee and Clark Williams all not starting, so 47 at the uh, beginning of this race. Down into the hairpin for the first time was uh, Lee Aberdeen leading the way, who's side by side though, back in the pack. It's Sal Aguilera making a move on Will McIntyre Jones for 11th place. Quite remarkable really that we've seen so little overtaking in the top 17. We have to go back here to find the action in the there's certainly a lot of it as you head into the hairpin. Patrick Pieper uh, with a bit of a narrow line on the exit of the hairpin there. He's going to get freight trained on the outside by Luca Verani and Moses Putniks and Comrade Bradry uh, who all go through. Thibaut Rabelar will as well. Patrick Pieper very slow and he's got suspension damage. Oh, you pretty good tyres to spot that one there, my friend. Well, well, is it, well, oh, we'll somebody's gone in yet. Yeah, right they've got a couple drives going to pit yes, road already. He is. He's in pit lane. So is Luca Verani, championship leader, mm. is in pit lane. We've got a lot of drivers in pit lane. So there's been a lot of suspension damage. The notifications you were getting were not false. Uh, they don't definitely do uh, point towards incidents. And here they are. Patrick Pieper on the outside in the sort of goldish livery uh, into turn one. There's a big stack up on yeah. the inside. Then the Verani just goes over the back of him. The concertina effect, absolutely astonishing. And it's uh, given people no choice other than to get damage, unfortunately, in that one. And that's exactly what it is. Look at this at the moment currently. Uh, this is getting nice and close and spicy and dicey between the 47 and the 13. Wow. Charlotte Rillera oh. is making a great start, but he's round. And in front of the field, he'll go into the wall. He's miraculously avoided by most of the field. Joel Aguilera has been making such a good start to this race. But it's all come unstuck now as he goes for a spin out of turn nine and that oh dear that hard work is undone he's just uh, shunted into the grass on the straight as well for good measure down to 26th a little bit of a mistake too from uh, steven it looks like up the road there for the atomic motorsports so concertina effect out of the final corner uh, sorry the um down the main casino straight there the ping i think it's called and then you go up of course into the uh into the wall of champions they're gonna go side by side through there are you kidding me you can't, gentlemen, you can't. Oh, oh contact. Contact. Thibaut Rabelard goes around through into the final chicane. And look at everybody rejoining the circuit and going off and all sorts. Joel Aguilera goes into the pit lane to repair the damage. Is he beached on the curb up there? Thibaut Rabelard may well be beached up on the curb at the final corner. Saw his wheels in the air. Can he get traction from that point? You, you wonder, That's as fair. the rear wing has come off for somebody here, or a front wing, excuse me, it's the 27 car of Stephen Ridders who's got no front wing now. All oh, right, yes, there's Stephen. Oh, no. Yeah, I was trying to see that He's car got that awful beached, but we can't keep an eye on that one just yet. There's a lot of stuff action going on the track there. Still nothing changed between the lead. Well, there is, actually, because Mackenzie Rune has been passed by Hagham. Yeah. See if we can get a uh, replay of that see what happened in that change for second place but it's uh, no change in the actual lead Lee Aberdeen is uh, still heading the field but Ridders just getting overtaken by everybody Giovanni Salito gets down the inside following through John McKenzie around the outside will go uh, Adam Townsville on the exit of this corner as well trying to uh, pass his fellow Canadian Ridders going to have to be careful on the brakes down here as Rina Scatini tries to do the same down the inside Ridders uh, won't have the quite braking performance because of the lack of front downforce there he runs wide and he'll have to make sure that he has a clear run into pit lane here and doesn't rear end anybody on his way into pit lane but there he is making his way down the straight yeah he got to stay to the left Scatini. hand side because that's your pit lane entrance you don't yeah. want to be on the right that's for sure well, no, but you, you've got people in front of you, yeah. so this is not ideal either. They'll be slowing up for the corner. He'll want to slow down less to go into the pit lane, and he finally does do that. Patrick Williams also in uh, just ahead of these guys, and so this is a lot of pit stops to start off this race. Uh, Luca Verani doing the best of those who has made a pit stop so far. He's up to 37th as things stand, but that's still a very long way back for him. 
Yeah, there's Luca right here at the moment and a ton of traffic, which you'd imagine there is a ton of traffic currently on the track. Because you have, give or take, 40-something cars. We had a couple of non-starters, so we have 47 cars going on the track at the moment there, you Oh, look at Verani here. He's going to have to uh, nip past Maximilian Gerbhardt and will do... Oh, Nervy into turn five. Narrow through there, of course, and we've seen accidents there in the past going side by side. Verani makes his way through, though, to 36th position, but uh, look at the amount of uh, points that go, just go down the drain once you're behind like this. Simon Frelix up in fourth place, for example. He gained 32 points as things stand. It's uh, a real big swing. It's very early in the championship, of course, but uh, nevertheless, not good news for Luca Verani. What's happened to uh, Rishi Taparia here into... Nine and uh, eight and nine. He's gone for a very similar spin that Jao Aguilera experienced a few laps ago. Once again, like with Aguilera, everybody avoids him. Yeah, so it's going to be very, very difficult here. Even if you are the race leader like Lee at the moment, you've got to be careful because if they're going to start catching these cars too for now. Then if there's a spin up the road, you want to avoid it. Here we go. Here comes Luca across the championship leader as he got him send it up into the final turn. Sorry, that's not the final turn. My apologies. Oh, sort of is. Oh, no, that's right, this that. way. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the World of Champions. It gets the job done. Yeah. Uh, so Patrick Rowland's dispatched of now by Luca Verani. Uh, it's all Jakubowski dropping down a couple of moments ago, but I think he had just had a brief technical uh, problem, struggling to stay connected to the server. But he's back again now, fighting with his compatriot Simon Frelick for fourth position. And Frelick will hope, as more than anybody, that uh, Olszewski's internet problems are gone because it's no good fighting with someone if they're blinking around it's very mm. difficult to see where they are at any given moment if they're having trouble staying connected don't jinx the blinking okay we've got no blinking problems on this end at the moment so that's uh, if you see a lot mm. of cars blinking at once so that's just that's just a connection between me and the i racing server no doubt and the all the other cars on the track and here we go jacob that looks like that's an easy pass isn't it Straight on through. Yeah, Here we boy. go. I love the sensation of speed as you go through at the moment. Flew into that final chicane. And Olszewski is through into uh, the next position. Now, uh, Evan Way is slowing down on the straight here. wonder whether he got a slow down. No, maybe just a poor run. He defends from Tony Jimenez, though, and holds on to eighth position in the pack. Uh, on the move right now, Nicholas Westman, by the way. He's 12th place. Set a new personal best on that last lap. He's up a few places so far, but by no means the biggest gainer of the day so far. Sebastian Graveland is up to 24th position. He's gained 17 places already today and uh, is looking for a few more. He's just ahead of these guys, and that's why he's dispatched of so many. Side by side on the way towards turn one for Robert Ridgway and Giovanni Salito, and Ridgway makes his way through into 26th position. So uh, Salito down, and we'll have to look over his shoulder at Mike Sotlovs in the all-purple behind him, looking for his way through as well. And also, Matthew, there's a, don't forget the Canadian driver that we saw just before... I mean, that's Evan Way. This is his home track, so you got to go. You know, you've got the crowd that's supporting you and cheering you. Of course, they'll probably be cheering for some of these American drivers as well, too, because it's just across the border. They're all the way currently at the moment. There's probably a lot of American drivers, of course, so but you have uh, Mackenzie Rue, of course, running in P3. As well, there's a ton of other drivers on the grid. Oh, dear. Oh, contact in the background. Mm -hmm. Not sure who instigated all of that, but there was definitely a car backwards going towards the gravel, and it's Patrick Rollins Patrick. who's gone around and into the gravel. Not sure uh, why at turn eight. May have been self-inflicted, but you find it difficult to believe with so many cars around. Let's see what happened here from the air as they go under the bridge. Is it going to mask it slightly? Oh. Uh, oh, no, it was Rollins on his own by the looks mm. of that. Yeah, it locked up a brake, didn't it? Just went around completely on him. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, the battle is still brewing here at the moment. Well, this is now Brett on the hunt there to try to see if he can get the other uh, Polish driver, Simon, who's currently running in P5 after he dropped his place to his fellow countryman, Jacob. Yeah, Brent Brewer is trying to work his way into the top five as well. Simon Frelick has been just uh, slipping and sliding a bit early in this race. Although, as I say, we are still early in this race, at least. Not even a quarter of the way complete just yet. Can Ruiz have a go into the hairpin? Not always the best idea because of the long straight afterwards. But Ruiz has gone for the worst option of the two. If you're going to do it, you might as well fully commit. He only really half did so. Didn't want to get into contact with Frelick, I suppose. And so had to back out of that one at the hairpin. And 
will regroup to have nice another though. go at another time. <laughs> Maybe a good idea, but I think if you're trying to make a move at the hairpin, you've got to be this is uh, big definitive this with it or not try one at all. The finish driver at the moment's going around, I'd say, right here. And he was running, uh, ooh, he was running up around 15 or something like that, I think, just before he's dropped his places. 12 and he's best. horrible right here because you have to wait for those cars. And now he's got to try to swing it around and he can't. This turning circle's not very good. Look at that. Ooh, he can't oh, back be careful up reversing. And there it is. So, well, damage limitation. He's lucky. He hasn't damaged the car, but he's dropped a couple of places because of that. was very close to disaster as... Uh, Westman reversed onto the racing line. Meanwhile, side by side between Zoltan Zamotta and uh, Masters Putniks for 18th place. Zamotta prevails in that one. Meanwhile, Ruiz is under Ruiz a lot of pressure here at the moment. So got through. He's made his way so. through on uh, Frelick. Yeah. Yeah. But now Simon Fessi's here too. Yeah. So Frelick is really struggling somehow. We don't know specifically why. If he copped any damage, you can see those tire marks on that wall out there too. So no doubt a couple of. Uh, People have had a little tangle with the fence. Tony Jimenez has had to slow down yes. through turn eight and nine on that occasion. So he's now behind Will McIntyre Jones and outside the top 10 as well. But on board with Simon Fessi, we go. Uh, is there going to be any move into the chicane? It's difficult when the car in front of you has slipstream as well. But Fessi's got good straight line speed here, which is important at this circuit. You need to just take the little bit of wing off and get a bit speedier down the straight. Not really prevailed into anything into the final chicane there. Uh, has Frelick had a good enough run there to reply to Ruiz? Doesn't maybe look like it, although he looked to the outside briefly. He didn't do anything about it. And into the final chicane here. It's a pretty reliable battle for 18th place. Samotta and Putnix oh. again. Oh, they both went for that. And Comrade Bradbury cheekily takes advantage as well to go into 19th place. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. I mean, that's, that's, been, that's been overtaken opportunities, which you shouldn't really do out of that final turn. But some drivers have been giving that opportunity. And once your nose is in there at the moment, like James would say, you get it chopped off like a plastic surgeon. So this is currently the situation in the race. This is still that battle that we're going to see brewing at the moment here between the French driver, Alfessi. Something else I wanted to tell you, but I can't quite remember it. I think it's just... Uh, just a little confused as I'm looking through about a thousand different, uh, 48 different names and things like that on the screen. I do apologize. I don't know why it's not showing up at the moment. The IG, the, our logo, of course, the league logo and the JP Broadcasting Network logo. Something has broken, but you all know where you are on the league because it's right there in the description. Yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's hope so. But anyway, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get that sorted um, shortly. Uh, meanwhile, Oh. little brush on the wall as Nicholas Westman tries to recover from those problems he had earlier on. John McKenzie is the one who has to do the fending this time, although he doesn't really bother. And right at the site where he went for that spin, Westman makes up another place and this time gets the traction down uh, a little bit better. So he's up into 24th place. It's always a, a difficult one going into the corner where you previously had an incident to sort of go into there again, make an overtake and be positive through there. It's very easy to sort of go into your shell a little bit with that and not necessarily uh, be quite as expressive in the moves as you would otherwise be because of that previous spin. I'm interested at the moment. This man's on a flyer. His last lap was about half... Half a... Uh, give or take, wasn't it? About two... Yeah. It was a... His last lap was a, a 28 flat. And the last lap for Lee up the road, there's a 28.4. 28.5, really. So, he's on a charge. You can see he's down within a second. DRS activation time? No, unfortunately, they won't have it in these cars. God, if that was Formula 1, I guarantee he'd already be one-tenth of that DRS open down this main street. That's for sure. But these drivers don't have those cheat codes. They have to do it with their pure driving skill. The old-fashioned way, as uh, as they would say. Uh, so, it take a little bit of time just yet, but may well be there shortly. Let's compare the lap times this time around. I think they're going to be almost uh, dead on with one another because last time around, Akeem gained four tenths of a second. What about this time around? They are absolutely locked together. Just six thousandths of a second separated them on that lap time there. That's astonishing. But that shows exactly what you need to know about this battle in terms of uh, the fact that they're very, very close on speed indeed. Uh, meanwhile, Pedro Suarez is 
Uh, working on a move with Tony Jimenez just ahead of him. And the Portuguese driver. Oh, we've had a crash. We've had a crash somewhere. This is quite big, actually. I think also Fessy's been involved with this. Have a look at this one. This is probably a bit further back, and you can pronounce that certain name for Chris. You've done it before. Yeah, Chris George and is, yeah, is. Uh, the one oh. at the back and just makes a bit of contact. Does he stay with the here? This is front. the problem. People are coming around. Oh, no, oh. no, no, no. Oh, he realizes that getting out yeah. the way is the good idea. The problem there was that there were people side by side coming up on him, which is even worse. And this is Fessy. Now, that's like, it looks like somebody's got to slow down now. They've just uh, like, let it pass unless that's lap traffic. He's kind of took it too fast oh, in here. Oh, no. Not the first time. And he's in a very dangerous spot because everybody likes to go right out wide there. This is when you need a spotter or somebody to let you know he's returned back to pit road. That's probably the oh, safe thing the to safe do. Thing. Yeah. yeah. But it's also the one that costs you more time. So very Ooh, uh, gracious Pedro. in doing that. Although that may well be the end of his day. Pedro Suarez was looking for that move for the top 10. He's not going to be looking for it anymore. He's gone around at the hairpin as well. It's all gone pole shaped here. Let's have a look. This could have started with Mafia up the road, perhaps. Let's have a look. No, this is Mafia exiting the pit road here. This is strange. What has he done here? I have something's broken here, but... It's just detecting this is really, really slow. It should get oh, I back on. You see, drivers, a lot of drivers are locking up here. Maybe they're oh, also scared when they're seeing this, the cars exiting pit road as well, too, and go, oh, jeez. Of course, the drivers have to stick to their... Uh, to the inside apron line there. You can't cross that one, otherwise you'll get a penalty. Lots of other action that's happening and moving it back here. But uh, let's go back around here, and here is the Finn that, remember, had a little bit of a spin before that for Nicholas, but he's making his way back up through the field now, currently in P20. Yeah, he's recovering well. So that's a uh, pass on Richard Van Veen now for 20th position. Meanwhile, we go on board with Ryan Hakim. Uh, good afternoon to everyone who's watching along on YouTube this afternoon. Uh, Ajaz Hakim has come in to let us know that Ryan is driving under antibiotics at the moment. He's uh, had a virus in the last few days, oh, no. so he's doing very well to be up here with the Aberdeen mm. right now. One of a, a previous series champion, of course, the Aberdeen. He won the very first series that we covered, actually, in the IGP F3 League, as it was then, as part of GP, uh, JPB. There were seasons before then, of course, but the first one we covered here on this very channel, Lee Aberdeen was the winner after uh, tying the season with Kenzie Newoff. It went back to count back that season in a winner-takes-all finale at Silverstone. It's seeming like a long time ago now. It was uh, this season last year, season two of 2023, when Lee Aberdeen was able to take the win. That's going to seem like a very long time ago now to the race leader who's being put under immense pressure from the man we're riding on board with. Getting it down to about half a tenth, and then it's back up about seven, of course, without time will change as you go slowing through the corners there and you get on the power acceleration. Depends on how they configure the cars as well, too, if you've got a little bit more downforce on it or not. Depends what you like. You can see it at the moment from Hackham of how it kind of felt to be riding on board his machine. But further back, we're going to keep an eye on this close battle because it's got the Tommy and the Tony together. It's a Tommy, right? That's the, yeah, the finished 44 Yeah, slight difference driver. in spelling. Yeah. Very slight uh, minor difference between the two of them, but... Uh, oh, Simon's gone off place. somewhere. Oh, we'll see if we can approach yeah. him soon. Or is he oh, there he is. Yep. There's, there's, he's just getting oh, he's going there, up. and he's got... He's oh, up. his engine's gone. Yep. Engine's gone as well in the crash. Simon Frelick drops out the top ten with an engine failure after the crash. So he's really gone off at turn eight and nine. He must have backed it into the wall or something because his engine is smoking. Yeah, that or, or you could actually over revved it completely. Got maybe oh, to he? maybe to spin it. Oh. oh, oh, and he's been hit. Yes. So I reckon you're right. I think he's over revved it first. He's over revved it because it's probably yep. At this point, it's cooked because you can obviously you can do that in eye racing if you don't slip it the gear and the right thing. Bang, you know, just you know, revs will just blow it up. And we just saw that as we went on board before with those drivers and passed it. So. Uh, even Way's gone into pit road, so the, so the local Canadian driver, uh, this is a replay by the way, let's go back to live, but yeah, he's gone in, so we are having drivers electing to go in the pits uh, really early, we saw a lot of them do that, didn't we, but that's because they probably were involved in some of that uh, bumper car action that we had earlier. Yeah, is he going to get out traffic here, as well. right next to the Tron Sorry? car? Yeah. This is uh, Evan Way making his way back out onto the circuit, head of Edward Amos, can he make his way through? Well, yes. Amos gives him a good amount of space through the second part there, and now it's going to be side-by-side side with uh, 
Putnix and Amos, who makes his way through as well. A good move down the inside. And uh, Comrade Bradbury will join in the battle soon as well. But Evanway has lost very little time. He must have been the one who tipped around Simon Fessy into that spin eventually. Fessy, as you say, had already overread the engine and blown it on the way towards turn eight. However, Way sealed the deal, if you like, by spinning him around because he didn't know that he wasn't going to accelerate off of turn nine. That gave him a slight amount of damage, so he came in to repair it, and he's now 13th. I think Simon had another crash. I had to go have a look at that one. Well... Yeah, I don't know. He's gone back here to pit road or something like that. Maybe something's just uh, blowing up on there. But look at that. Just set the fastest lap. The man that uh, Brett there is running in P5. So keep an eye on that. But we'll keep an eye on this battle. Still the chance of rain. 32%. I don't think. Look at those clouds. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. As we're about halfway through the race. Yeah, we're getting there uh, now. Still, Lee Aberdeen sustaining the pressure at the front of the field. It's accident, about yeah. for 15th Ooh, we're watching here. Conrad Bradbury has caught Edward Amos here, who's lost some positions in the last few laps, and Amos just breaks uh, early, drops back. Uh, there's a lap car, by the way, in between Amos and Zamotta. Not sure who yeah. that is, but um, there is a lap car involved there. Let's have a look at what happened down this here in eight here. and nine. another one mm. of the action zones of this circuit. Maximilian Gerber. Oh, oh that was ambitious. And, and there's rude. nowhere to go for these cars. Look at this. Oh. Because they're double, they're blocking the whole track, essentially. Thankfully, one of them's gone off there. Oh. This is very, very dangerous. This is the reason why I did see about three or four cars piled up there. And that's a tow. Once again, it's frustrating. And that's a difficult place, of course, to lose your car, as you were aware, my friend. Because you're just on the racing line. I mean, this is the good thing about this track, isn't it? it it's those walls come out and bite you. And that's the one right there. That has been biting the drivers. And it's, it's just so, they're not, they're turning circles. They're not designed to turn on a dime. Yep, they're, they're not. And it's, it was unavoidable contact there, to be honest. What we just saw out of uh, turn nine. As I say, a real action zone of this racetrack. How many of the cars are even still in this race? I hear you ask. Well, uh, if we're counting the did not starts and those who may be out of the race, then we could have 10 retirements already, three non-starters. So that will bring it to seven DNFs, although not all of those are confirmed. I think Simon Frelick has finally called it a date. Um, and we're still waiting to see whether Maximilian Gebhardt or Chris Jordan and the leaders who were involved in that incident that we just saw a few moments ago, whether they can return again. Plenty of pit stops today, though, and this is the best of them, though, for those who has made a stop. Evan Way is in 13th place. Robert Widgeway is down in 21st. John Aguilera and Luca Verani are a couple of seconds apart. They've also made stops in 25th and 26th position. It's not a strategic call for these drivers. It's not one of those races where you need a pit stop. Uh, is the IGP uh, Super Formula Lights League. However, it is uh, necessary. If you get damage, you can use your fast repair. And Evan Way has certainly done that. He goes down the inside of Marcelo Kessler, who gives him the right of weight. And uh, Canadian gets into 12th position. I need to get there. I need to get rid of this bridge, please, in iRacing. There's no point in having a cab. We don't need a walkway bridge in a virtual world. It's blocking some of the cameras here. I do wish I was going to give you the opportunity to get rid of some of that. I know it looks fantastic and it looks like the real thing, but I want to see the bloody cars on the track, please. <laughs> just, a, just a little Beagle's complaint for the day. Are these two still going at it and Jacob's really putting the pressure? I think Brett got the job done, didn't he? So that's Jacob dropping another place yeah. down. So Brett's up, up three here. So one Canadian moving up. We've got a US driver moving up. I love that angle, isn't it? As you go out to that fence. We have another little battle brewing at the moment here too with the uh, Norwegian driver of O'Cherry there. And he's got the two Tonys up the road there, the Tony and the Tomi. So they've been going up too for now. Look at the gap now. Look at the gap between Hackham and uh, Lee. It's, it's almost two seconds. So I don't know if Hackham's just backing off there, saving fuel, tires or something like that. My friend, well, you don't have to worry about fuel, but saving tires mm. just... For, for mounting a charge later on for a pit stop. Not really sure why that gap was open, to be honest with you. It's now two seconds. But uh, the last time around, Hakeem lost half a second in the oh, traffic uh, battle probably, for the right, lead. Because they're approaching it thick and now, <laughs> two for now everywhere. I don't really know what that uh, was all about, but, uh, but there you go. Um, oh, it's turns eight and nine for Nicholas Westman and... Uh, 
the rest of them. He's trying to overtake Zoltan Zamata and Pedro Suarez right now in towards the final hairpin. They go. And uh, on the inside, Zamata protects his position well, although I think the speed of Suarez and Westman will be too much. These guys are drivers who would expect to finish in the top 10 on every, any given week, I would say. Uh, the moment, they're very much not there. Westman's got some real speed, though, on yeah, the straight line. Go he must have special. trimmed out that car in oh. terms of aerodynamics, and he's through into the oh. final chicane. Yeah. That was very impressive straight line speed. Yeah, yeah, and I think you really do need it for the overtakes. You really, really do. Let's go back to this other battle still boring up here as well. Because that, st that casino straight is so long there, and it's always a fantastic over overtaken opportunity, of course, before you get into the world champion. So. Oh, no. Westman's off. He's just made that overtake, and now yep. he's off at turn oh, one, he's, and he's, he's out. Toed. He's towed. Well, that may well be it. He may well have thought that uh, one spin, okay, I can deal with that, but two, mm. that's enough for me, and maybe it was involving somebody else. He doesn't seem pleased or best impressed with that incident there. Oh, it has, it has actually. I think it's come off track. It could be Petro. The Portuguese driver. You can see yeah. this battle car. We were in, we were looking at the cars ahead up the road there live, and this is what you just caught in the back of your picture. That's definitely contact. Oh, it wasn't Suarez. He, he did make contact eventually, but it was Messman who yeah. almost did that to himself, hitting the car ahead of him in the rear. So that is that. Uh, he goes around. So, uh, yeah, dearie me, not good news for uh, turns one and two there for uh, Nicholas Ooh, Westman. Meanwhile, here goes Tony Jimenez down the inside yep. of Tommy Maru, and that was through for Jimenez. A good driving from him, and that is eighth place for the Spaniard. Yeah, he's been working on that one for some time, hasn't he? He's just been chasing, 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 and eventually one little mistake. I like that, or the dri uh, driver elected to uh, not fit, get in this battle at the moment. But there's another battle brewing at the moment here, and this is the uh, about 19th position here. Yeah, side by side again for 90 for position and Gravelin goes through again. He is having such a good day. 22 places gained today to, for Sebastian Gravelin. Robert Ridgway, the latest victim, and uh, Ridgway's going to have a job to defend from McKenzie as well into turn one. He does, and so uh, he stays ahead in 20th position. But what a drive from Gravelin. 22 positions gained today, and their gaps are so small that he could have a few more before the end as well. Yeah, good. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, he hasn't had a pit stop just yet. As you can see, some of the drivers are out of. The key is Evan Way, really, isn't it? I mean, he's down six places, but he's the local Canadian hero here. And he's the one essentially here that has made it the pit stop that is mandatory to require as we're about halfway through the race. So I'll show you the gap to the leader now so you can get an idea how far away he is. He's currently 34 seconds away from the leader, so there's no, no way he's going to be able to make that up because we're looking at a pit stop around here of what? Well, you see, this is the thing I don't really like about iRacing pit stop times. I mean, it's showing it's, what, 32 odd seconds for a pit stop time, which means he should be able to be essentially, I'd say, P3, but you'll find that it's not really that accurate. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, we don't really know, to be honest. Um, here. Uh, so, well, let's see. Uh, towards the, oh, and the exit of the chicane here, Edward Amos losing a place to uh, Marcius Putnik, is he, or is he trying to get through here? Well, he's uh, certainly behind him now. Putnik's in 15th, and Edward Amos just had to lock up slightly to avoid hitting the back of him into turn two as well. Meanwhile, side by side for 19th and 21st, Graveland back through Done. into 19th, ahead of Ridgeway, who briefly got ahead of him, and John McKenzie loses a place to Joel Aguilera, who's recovering well from his spin earlier on today. There's a great little battle boring at the moment here in this midfield pack. Because you've got Sebastian, of course. We're talking about the Norwegian drivers up 22 places. He's got Robert Ridgway hunting him down. Two for nail here at the moment. Robert's only... Robert started one that place right up the road. There's a lockup. Robert's going to get on this gas quickly as possible. Send it up the inside. And then hold on the racing line. Job done for the American. It should be job done. Should be, into should turn be. eight, he's yeah. squeezing Graveland as much as possible. Who has to use a bit of the tarmac on the left-hand side there to uh, sort of get get entered well into turn eight. Now Aguilera is going to have a chance. He should be uh, 
uh, coming through on these guys very quickly, but Gravelin is going to make sure that that doesn't happen. He's so late on the brakes, though, Aguilera, who go round the outside, and he's uh, absolutely level off the corner. He'll now be given the slipstream by Robert Ridgway, and so Aguilera will have the place here, surely, although Ridgway gives the slipstream now to Graveland, who's almost on the grass down the straight here. What a great battle between these two. Absolutely level into the chicane, and it's late on the brakes from Graveland. Aguilera could see that coming. He's going for the late apex and the exit onto the front straight. And so there'll be another battle into turn one here. Aguilera's going to have another go. Does he go outside? He will. And that will give him the inside for turn two if he can stay oh. there. And he's made contact off into the grass. He thought he was going to get given the room. Gravelin didn't think he was going to go for it. And so there was slight contact made. Meanwhile, Luca Verani joins in. He is at now 21st, just behind them. This is going to be a little bit scary for Luca here, the, the, the Triple Two machine, because he's going to love this battling up the road, but it's also knowing that there's going to be problems like this. And when he comes back on the track, Luca's going to be approaching him at a million miles an hour, squeezes on by saying, thank you very much. And that's going to be interesting, as we're seeing a little bit of flashing carrying here from the Scotsman here of John McKenzie. So that's not going to be good. And because certainly he is in a battle with these guys around him as well. And we can't even see him on the track while well, he's around there somewhere, but... Yeah, um, I don't. I can't even put the camera on him right now. Sorry, it's just all over the place. Kenzie but, uh, is yeah. out for some reason. Ah. that's why. Anyway, another uh, battle Lee, occurring. Whoa. This is up here at the moment uh, ooh, for uh, P13. Yeah, meanwhile, Marcelo Kessler just ahead of Comrade Bradbury for 13th position. Bradbury needs a good exit here and maybe to have a go into turn one. Is he close enough? No, I think is the answer to that pretty resoundingly, and so. He will have to stay behind for 13th place. But we'll what up. a battle we just mm. saw. It's still going on for 21st yeah. on backwards, by the way. Verani is now free of it. So is Ridgeway. But Sebastian Gravelin is, is at the front of another group now, still involving Joel Aguilera. Fantastic battles there, well, unfortunately. Well, get us just what? It's down. But it's down the other way now. It's Mackenzie wow. Rune putting the pressure on. So Hackham's made a mistake somewhere for sure because... He, he was starting to set the fastest purple sector, I think, for the last sector or something like that. And then he's made a mistake or something around that. Or traffic caught him because of these cars everywhere. And now, Mackenzie Room is hunting him down. We've heard this a few times this season, haven't we, Mr. Mackenzie Room? Yeah, we certainly have. I think it was at turn eight and nine where Hakim went off. But it was ever so brief, so I reckon it was a slowdown. You can see when a driver's off by uh, looking at their position number and whether it's gone red or not it was very brief Hakeem so it wasn't anything major but it was uh, a slowdown I'm going go to guess other battle I think around turn here because where the excitement has been for a bit we'll, we'll switch back up to that one in a second actually we'll have to switch over to this one because these two are going for it too for now and that's Conrad he's the other Canadian he's just behind the other Canadian of Evan Way who we know you can see has taken his pit stop already so Canadians moving up and this Conrad He's up 11 positions as well, too, in this race. So, hey, oh, Canada, my friend. This is your home track. This is your time to shine. Yeah, it is. A home race for them. Aguilera back through again on Marek Zotlovs, the Latvian, into 23rd place. Just ahead, Sebastian Gravland in the white and red. And he's defending again from Chris Trott this time. Not able to make his way through on this occasion. Ten laps to go, though, as they cross the line. This race going by very quickly. Seeing some fantastic battles up and down the field. And the Italian further back here at the moment. Giovellini, he's up 10 positions. Uh, uh, Joel, it says Joel had a crash, so this may be the reason why Joel's fallen back from this pack, because we all know that they're there. Maybe just a little bit of a tap. Let's have a look. Let's keep an eye out for the green machine there for the Spaniard. He sends it up the inside oh. here. Full set. Can't commit to it at that point. But hey, it, it, it's it's probably better than having a little bit of a spinner. -er, I'll tell you that right now, especially in that corner we've heard. It's probably better than rear-ending someone yeah. and yeah, hitting them, so uh, so fair enough. Meanwhile, side-by-side, side, Otlov's now overtaken by Trot, who presumably lost a place to Aguilera, then also lost one to Otlov's, but it didn't last very long because uh, he's back through again, is Trot. And so uh, that's 23rd for Trot again in the race. It's pretty much as you were in that group uh, now, but uh, what great racing we saw there while we had it. Comrade Bradbury... 
is ahead of Marcelo Kessler now, who can't seem to stop sliding backwards. Here's Marcus Putnik's on board with right now, going for it in towards turn one. Just grabs sixth gear before the braking zone at turn one. Can't quite do it. And so they will stay behind in this battle for 14th. A little bit of a lockup as Putnik tries to find his way through again. That's good, but you've got to put the pressure. You've got to fill your driver that you're hunting down. Mirrors. Completely fill those mirrors for the car. So that while you take the distraction away. So he's trying to think about... He's got to look at his mirrors. Whilst he blinks his mirrors out for a second, he's perhaps just missing the perfect apex or the breaking point you want to go into a corner. That's all you can do. Psychological games at play. Still nothing's happened. We know, and, and at the moment there, uh, Jerome out there says Lee's got this one on the bag. Lee, of course, the Aussie driver. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Yep, he should have this one on the bag. We see. Oh, you don't want to ride up on those sausage curves too much, my friend. That car is light, a.k.a. the super lights, and a.k.a. you'll be in that fence. Yes, he certainly will. Uh, meanwhile, down into the braking zone they go. Uh, is it? It's the exit that you really need, but Marcus Putnix hasn't got one, I'm afraid. Slipstream for uh, Marcelo Kessler, or, or of Marcelo Kessler, as we go back to second place. Rana Kim has done well to uh, stop Mackenzie Rim from overtaking him at the very least, but he's not going to be able to catch Lee Aberdeen, I wouldn't have thought, in the remainder of this race. And it looks like it could be a return to the top for the Australian, who is a previous champion of this series, of course. He won at Road America to start out the season. Uh, he... Uh, didn't do so well oh, one week yeah. ago at Road Atlanta. Didn't get into the top 10 at the Hockenheim either, but it looks like it could be a return to winning ways here today. Another one is to Jacobs, just starting to creep in the back there, of course, of Brett. So that's another interesting one. Eight laps to go. On the previous time around, the slipstream will uh, be helping him for sure. But that is very impressive. The only driver to get into the 1 minutes 27s. It's 1.27.8 from Mackenzie Rune, uh, who's now starting to apply the pressure. But uh, Hakim still keeping him at a comfortable distance because it was a good lap last time around from Hakim. And he is... Uh, he was in the low 128s last time around, for example. What, 28 at zero. That's only a two-tenths loss. So uh, Hakim is doing a good job of holding him off. Yes, yeah, so sorry, had a little brief uh, <clears throat> connection issue there for a second. My OBS just dropped out, uh, but it's reconnected, so everything's fine. Ah, we're going back to this battle, and here it is, side by side. Oh, and remember, this is the, the one of the biggest gainers in the field here, of course, is Sebastian and Joel. So the Spaniard versus the Norwegian live here and going hard. There. 21 and 22nd at the moment, my friend. That's a sender on the go. outside. Aguilera, oh, careful to the outside. That was close, oh, and Gravelin's gone around. He hits the curb at turn one and he goes around some of that hard work undone. He's now down to just 18 places going today, which is still quite remarkable. <laughs> but uh, he is down to 23rd. And Aguilera, by the way, has now lost only nine places. And you may be wondering why we're talking about him moving through the field so well when he's lost places since the start. Well, that's because he had an early incident. But since then, he has been recovering very, very well. As has Luca Verani, actually, who's up into 20th place now. Meanwhile, Marcus Putnik is trying to find a way through on Marcelo Kessler, who a few laps ago lost a position to Comrade Bradbury. He's uh, just on the back of Tony Maru now for 12th place, but uh, Putnik is uh, just in behind looking for a way past Kessler and has been doing for a few laps now. I love these cars. I really, really do, because the attention to detail of them and the lockups, how difficult they are to drive, how much they fly on these chicanes. They are, I mean, just, just to watch is just a spectacular. It, they're fun. They're fun to watch. And as you know, I don't drive. In any, I've, I've never driven a lap. You know, everybody knows I've never driven, driven a single lap around any car, any vehicle, anywhere in iRacing. Yet I have about $3,000 worth of everything. Oh, but look at it. It's entertaining. entertaining. It's called 10 times more entertaining than watching real F1. Yeah. Well, that's not too difficult at the moment, but still. Um, yeah, certainly is. Uh, a good afternoon, by the way, to Jerome Lamy, who's joined us in the YouTube chat uh, again. He said, Lee's got this in the bag now. Well, it's coming down again. Um, and it is his to lose. I do agree, Jerome, but uh, it's come down by about a third since that mistake from Hakim. It feel like it could be one of those races that Hakim looks back on and thinks, well, I maybe could have won this one, to be honest, because oh, I have the speed over Aberdeen, but uh, just that mistake has prevented me from really having a go. Sorry, cut you off there. Robert Ridgway has had a problem here, and this may have caused an accident with somebody else. Yes, it is. This is what I was fearing. Oh, they've oh, come no. together before the corner. They have. That's a That's through turn five. place. 
Yeah, turn five. All right. And we'll need to sort of do gonna, a bit more I'm gonna unpicking do, I'm gonna here. I'm going to rewind it a little bit. Sorry, apologies about that. I don't like how to do it too much. But it is the only way for us to get an indication of what's happened here. Out of the exit. Massive overspeed. You don't think it would be a slowdown called here, would there? And then, whoa. Oh, dear. It well, like I think Robert there's something at play there. Stopping in time. Or oh, you think that's a little... Oh, I yeah. think he was brake Cranky. testing him almost there. Oh. Patrick Rollins and Robert Ridgway, it was. Was Rollins a lap down there? May well, mm, m yeah, maybe. Maybe. He comes the local I'm, I'm not Canadian sure hero, my friend. The one that's gained a lot of places. The one that's taken a pit stop as well, too, very early. And now he smells some French Unity racing up the road there. Oh, that's wide. Dennis Cornu has opened the door there and said, walk on through, Evan Way, and he will do. Into 10th position, the top driver to have made a stop for out today after contact with another Frenchman, Simon Fessi, at this very corner a few laps ago. He got that repaired. He's back in the top 10 now, and he's made good use of that pit stop as well. With three laps to go, that should be his limit now, but he'll be pleased with a top 10, you would have thought. I was going to say, I wanted to do the, I wanted to do the pun. I was like, you can have it his way. He can have it yeah. Evan's way. If you want it anyway, have it Evan's way. Sorry about that, Evan. Why do you like that one at the moment? This battle's growing, course. P falls up for grabs, my friend. We've got to get Evan way puns in uh, yeah. more. Because uh, it's just too easy. Uh, Jakob Ozeski is looking for his way through, though. As you say, from uh, Brent Ruiz here in fourth. That car behind is not involved in the fight. Giovanni Salito currently running down in the low 20s of the field. Uh, he's just behind them, but not really affecting them at all. But can Olszewski find his way through? He has uh, really turned on the speed here towards the end. And I feel like Brent Ruiz, Brent Ruiz might have just uh, run out of steam, if you like, towards the end, maybe. He was making good progress earlier on and has gained three places today, but Olszewski has taken things a little bit cooler and calmer. And ever since, uh, he has been closing in and now has got three laps to try and make this move. Yeah, this is where you go. You're the Polish driver here at the moment. Uh, Jacob has to uh, do his absolute best. This is one of the closest battles you're going to see, of course, at least up here for the crucial points paying positions. Uh, Lee's going to bring it home, let's hope, because the Aussie. And uh, we know. Oh, Evan, Evan Ways had a crash. Evan Ways had a crash. Keep an eye on this one because it should be. Oh, that's behind him. So I'm going to have to show you this one. I that don't want to show it. Oh, no. Please, no, Evan. Doing such a fantastic job, too, for the local hero. This looks like he's gone. Oh no, this is a, here it is. This is where you need to get the best seat in the house. Unfortunately oh, no. not for Evan. That's it, that's it. It's an awkward so. hit on the wall as well. Yep. I fear for his suspension there. Where he's hit the wall. Does he get going again? Where is he? 16th now for Evan Way. That is such a shame. We were going to get a Canadian in the top 10 at home, but it doesn't look like we're going to get that. Conor, uh, Comrade Bradbury is now the top Canadian in seven, uh, excuse me, 12th place actually. Just a second or so off Tommy Maru in 11th place. So that is a, a real shame for Evan Way, who I said and cursed maybe by saying he was in the top 10 for good now. But unfortunately, came unstuck at 8 and 9. And that is a, a corner that's given him trouble on two of the 32 laps here tonight. A real shame for Evan Way, who's now down in 16th place and might try and get past Eddie Amos before the end here for 15th. I hope so. You, you stop talking too, too bad about that, Evan. There, all right? He's still doing a good job. Well, we've been talking good about him anyway. So that's the battles, as you can see. So he's got to just put his head down. We don't know how much damage that he did cop on his rear wing. It did look like a little bit of a slap, but I don't know. I mean, they're super light, aren't they? So they're quite light. They're probably very fragile. We're still going to keep our eyes peeled. Keep an eye on that timing board. So we got to see at the moment. And that looks like somebody's out completely. That looks like it's a disconnection. No, it's come back in. That's a blink. Ooh, that. Look at that. Runes just put the fastest lap here to try and defend off Jacob's attack here. So this is good for gold. I'll tell you what. That's got to upset the driver that's attacking you, isn't it? They haven't let go. All right. Let me show this. Let me just put it in the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, it might well do. And so that's just... Oh, Jack Willens just uh, yeah, saving so a slide in the, in the background, but he's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ruiz there trying to make sure that he holds on to fourth place, showing that, uh, yeah, he's very much going against my thoughts that he was running out of steam towards the end here. He's certainly got a lot of steam left. And Jakob Olszewski is uh, going to have to overcome all of that to try and get this fourth place by the end. Turns eight and nine. 
going to be corners where you have to set things up either for a move at the hairpin or get close enough so that you can get the traction off of the hairpin and then go for it into the final chicane maybe turn one by the time that you get there but there's lap traffic up ahead here Ooh, from Brent Ruiz a, a, a bit of traffic in terms of positional as well because he's only a couple of seconds behind Mackenzie Rune this is very true traffic look at that you can see the track map everywhere it's dots everywhere that's what you have that's what the fun thing about this league when you have 47 and change cars a couple of retirements but they are out there and they're getting out of people's ways you see it but the problem is of course is that if you make a mistake or they make a mistake you have to avoid them two battles currently at the moment we see Evan Way trying to make his way back up p15 we might have to switch out one over if there's no overtake yet there's a blink too from jacob no we'll stick with this one because of that jacob's at the fastest lap and there is your lap car traffic and, and no catch up at the right place at the right time is key isn't it luckily they'll get around they will uh, good lap traffic uh, driving there actually to get out of the way before turn three and four that was close to the wall for Ruiz he's leaving everything on the table now knowing that a scrape on the wall won't do him too badly at the end of the race he knows he doesn't have to take this car very much further than the end of this lap out of turn seven he goes now weaved around a little bit tries to break the slipstream tries to get into the head of Ozeski as much as he can to try and stay away into eight and nine this would have been a decent opportunity and it's not a very good run from Jakob Ozeski that might well be it it. Brett Ruiz might well have taken the place and uh, gotten into fourth position on the uh, standings. Meanwhile, Lee Aberdeen is on his way to victory. This little bit of lap traffic towards the end has lost him a lot of time. 1.5 seconds back to Ren Hakim, who might be ruining the missed opportunities of this race. He may feel that he could have won here today on a day where He's continued to improve right until the very last lap of this one. Lee Aberdeen hasn't needed to, though. He will weave around out of the final corners and take his second win of the season in the IGP Fun Super Formula Lights League. He is the winner at Montreal. Good job there for this straight, of course. So, Ozzy, 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 I'm bloody proud of you, my friend. Got the job done. Battle could. And just to let you know there that Evan Way did get past... Eddie Amos during that other battle that we we're looking up earlier as well too so but then the rest of the field are all coming across there some fantastic racing some very disappointing moments for some of the drivers damn we all know if you're going to go to the Canadian Grand Prix this year that's the seat you need to go to right just sit right there at that corner and uh, capture all the action as the car's battling into as, as Ridgeway Racing says hits me in the afterlife congratulations to the win there thank you Robert Ridgeway who himself had retired from the session i think he did robert didn't he after yeah. a few little tangles i wonder uh, if he can tell us actually what went on there yeah. himself because uh, we couldn't quite work it out so uh, if you would like to let us know then uh, then please do we saw it but uh, i feel like there's some unanswered things in there uh, before we go uh, there is one more battle to the line here sebastian graveland oh, wow. is not that far ahead of chris trot and here they go trot <laughs> looking to the inside at the final chicane and has he gone in too deep no he's done it perfectly Chris Trott gets up to 21st. Sebastian Gravelin will have to settle for 19 places gained today. Mm. That will still be the most of anyone in the field. Yeah, you think, a good catch on that one. I thought they were pretty much done and dusted, but you're right. So Sebastian, at least for the Norwegian driver, should get that like that. He will get the driver of the day for most positions gained, at least. Nothing wrong with that. Is just going to retire that vehicle. So great driving from them as they all make their way Back into pit lane. Lee Aberdeen will make his way there as the victorious driver here this afternoon. Let's have a look at those uh, race results after 32 laps of racing. It was Lee Aberdeen who took the win by 1.3 seconds in the end ahead of Ryan Hakim. Uh, and then a lot of Americans coming up next. Brent, uh, Mackenzie Room, Brent Ruiz, uh, Jakob Ozeski, the, uh, the pole in the top five, but then Andy Flint. Uh, Woman Guitar Jones had a stealthy race to up to seventh. That of Tony Jimenez, Leonard Sherry, and Dennis Cornu, who rounds up the top ten. Tommy Maru just held off Connor Bradbury there, the best finishing Canadian. Marcius Putnik finished 13th ahead of Marcelo Kessler. Then Evan Way, who did get past uh, Edward Amos towards the end and nearly got past Kessler too. Then it was Amos. Uh, Zoltan Zamotra finished just ahead of Luca Verani, the championship leader who will lose that title after needing a pit stop today. Pedro Suarez had a poor day by his standards too. Jao Aguilera recovered to 20th after a stop. A late pass from Chris Trott got him up to 21st ahead of Sebastian Graveland. Then it was Marek Otlovs. Then uh, Stephen Ridders to round out those who finished on the lead lap. Rinus Catini was one down, along with Stuart Milne. Jack Williams, Giovanni Toledo, Adam Tasman, and Richard Van Veen round out the top 
20, top 30, excuse me. Patrick Olsen uh, was there too with Thibaut Rabelot, Oscar Artinano, and the only driver two laps down to finish, Matthew Gracie. Then Robert Ridgway, who won't be classified from that one, and neither will Patrick Rollins, John McKenzie, Jeans Carvajal, Rishi Tapira, Nicholas Westman, Nick Carty, Maximilian Gerhardt, Chris George Andalides, Simon Frelick, Simon Fessy, Patrick Williams, Patrick Pieper, and then the non-starters, Kojito Donnelly and Clark Williams. So that's your 50-car field. What a, a great race. A great return to the circuit, Gilles Villeneuve again, and Sebastian... Uh, <laughs> Dear me. Lee Aberdeen, Sebastian. the winner on this day. I thought you were going to say Sebastian Vettel or something like that, but yeah, exactly. Lee did it from the start, got challenged very early into that turn but remember no overtaking that's the rule that you have here at the IG IGP fund league because it gets too messy isn't it there was a bit of a pile up they got a, car, a lot of cars damaged and of course those cars damaged had to go to pit road and uh they still overall if you have to look at it um Leonardo Cherry there the Norwegian sorry I can't remember that's just rolling back in the mind but I was just trying to think who was the who was the one that actually led Evan Way, wasn't it? The one that took the pit stop. Yeah. And uh, which is what we calculated, what, 30 something something seconds or something like that? That's a chunk of time to lose. But anyway, that is yeah. it for this week, my friend. Usually nobody ever comes in for any of you around here, do they? We will wait for a little bit. But Rob, at least uh, Robert is out there in the chat giving his opinion on it. Yeah, so uh, I asked him a little bit about what happened to him. It, it looked a bit suspect, actually, between himself and Patrick Rollins. However, uh, Happy to report that there's nothing really uh, to say uh, as things went wrong. He said that, uh, or Robert Ridgway anyway, said that uh, he thought Rollins was going to stay on the racing line, um, but uh, didn't. And the uncertainty around that meant that they collided. Uh, Rollins also mentioned he apparently had a head headphone malfunction, so I couldn't really hear what was going on. Also, so uh, nothing as suspect quick. as I was suggesting at the time, uh, which is good yeah. news. This is what happened. Yeah. Um, you'll probably be able to see the miscommunication here in this uh, second view. So Rollins is, is sort of staying on the racing line yeah, and uh, or, or was, and Ridgway thought he was going to continue with that, but he didn't. And uh, that's uh, very sad that they made contact in the end, but... And that's all to really report, unfortunately, at the end of that race. Neither of those two will be classified at the end of the day. It was Lee Aberdeen's day here at the circuit. Jill Villeneuve, that's about it from us here on the JFB YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and uh, turn notification bells on to be notified of all the other broadcasts that go on during the week, every single night, pretty much, here on this channel. We are broadcasting to you, so... Uh, Make sure you check them out. A big thanks to everyone who's been tuned in tonight. I've been here Leary alongside Dean Biggles here for the IGP Fund Super Formula Lights League. Make sure you join us again for round five in one week's time. Until we see you then, it's goodbye for now.